On behalf of the Nebraska Board of Public Roads Classifications and Standards, welcome to this presentation. This is one in a series of videos, the purpose of which is to provide information on the Board's County Roads and Municipal Street Standards. Reference Nebraska Administrative Code Title 428, Chapter 2. The topic for this segment is Minimum Design Standards for Bridges, Non-Buried Structures, and Culverts. It is addressed in two videos. This is the first of the two. Other videos in this series cover the learning objectives shown on this slide. Some of the other videos should be viewed and understood before watching this video on bridges and structures. The assumption is that you are already familiar with or at least know where to find the information on Functional Classification Systems, Title 428 Nebraska Administrative Code, Chapter 1. How to get to and use the tables on pages 55 through 86 of the Minimum Design Standards. Terminology is important. Definitions are on pages 37 through 46 of the Minimum Design Standards. Notes, essentially an extension of the tables, are found on pages 47 through 54 of the Minimum Design Standards. Understanding 3R requirements is a point of emphasis because 3R standards for county roads and municipal streets were added to the minimum design standards in 2016. Learning objectives 6, 7, and 8 will not be covered directly in the Bridges and Structures videos. In this two-part series of videos on bridges and structures, definitions, notes, and 3R requirements specific to bridges and structures will be covered. Of those three, this video, part one, will cover definitions and introduce the two notes, 18 and 19, that address the two design criteria for bridges and structures, clear bridge width and design structural loading capacity. Part two, the second video, will go into more depth on notes 18 and 19, address other notes, and also provide a summary of 3R requirements for bridges and structures. In addition, this two-part series of videos covers other learning objectives specific to bridges and structures. Tables and how those work for structures. The two design criteria directly related to structures and the basis of values for those two criteria. The two design criteria are design structural loading capacity and minimum clear bridge width. Structural capacity involves a discussion on live loads HL93 and HS15. Clear bridge width is calculated from simple formulas. The type of work on a structure and the type of work on the road either side of the structure can affect the scope of work on each other. Those requirements will be discussed. Low water stream crossings and stream forwards and their unique requirements will also be covered. Of the learning objectives shown, this video, part one, discusses and demonstrates how tables in the minimum design standards work for bridges and structures and introduces the two design criteria for structures and the basis of their values. Part two, the second video, gets into more depth on note 18 and clear bridge width, addresses how work on a roadway and work on a structure can affect one another, and also addresses low water stream crossings and fords. It is good to be familiar with terminology used in the standards and throughout this presentation. It may be helpful to have a copy of the minimum design standards in front of you throughout this presentation. What is meant by length of a structure will be explained and definitions for bridge and non-buried structure are also provided. Nebraska's minimum design standards for county roads and municipal streets for its purposes, on page 44, provides definitions of bridge, non-buried structure, culvert, low water stream crossing, and ford. Stopping the video and reviewing these definitions will be helpful for a better understanding of the material presented in this video. When you think of a bridge, a certain image of a structure likely comes to your mind. That image may be something like the bridge over the Missouri River at Nebraska City, the bridge over the Niobrara River near Valentine, or something similar. However, for the purposes of the standards, as you read the definitions, you will realize that a bridge can also be other types of structures, such as a concrete box culvert or a culvert with multiple pipes, as long as their openings are more than 20 feet in length along the center of the road. 
The reason for this is that nationally, structures meeting the definition of bridge are tracked in the National Bridge Inventory System, NBIS. Similar to the definition of bridge, the term non-buried structure can include several types of structures, including a bridge type of structure. As long as the opening is from 4 feet through 20 feet in length along the center of the road, and it has 2 feet or less of fill or pavement on top. Understanding these definitions is important to avoid confusion between commonly used terminology for types of structures, in particular bridge and non-buried structure, and how the minimum design standards define those same terms broadly to include other types of structures. Length of bridges and other structures is a key measurement and important to understand what it is. It has implications with respect to design standards, funding, and inspections. It is very important to understand that length of a structure is the opening measured along the center of the road, no matter how a structure is oriented. For bridges, defined on page 45 of the Minimum Design Standards, length is the National Bridge Inventory System, NBIS, length, measured between undercopings of abutments, as shown in the upper two sketches on the slide, or between spring lines of arches, as shown in the bottom sketch. For culverts and multiple pipe arrangements, structure length is also measured along the center of the road. In the examples shown on this slide, structure length is measured to the extreme ends of the openings. For the box culvert at the top of the slide, it is illustrated by the dimension lines to the edges of the openings. The sketch at the bottom of the slide shows multiple pipes, a common arrangement. To be considered as acting together for the purposes of structure length, the clear distance between openings, or pipes, must be less than half of the smaller contiguous opening. The Nebraska DOT's Bridge Inspection Program Manual, dated March of 2018, on page 6, refers to the federal definition of bridge, which is found in 23 CFR 650.301. CFR is an acronym for the Code of Federal Regulations. The Board of Public Roads adopted this definition for consistency on page 44 of their 2016 Minimum Design Standards. Several types of structures can apply to this definition including bridge type structures, culverts, and multiple pipes. Note that the length of opening along the center of the roadway for a bridge is defined as more than 20 feet. The Board of Public Roads minimum design standards for county roads and municipal streets also apply to structures with an opening 20 feet and less, down to 4 feet, measured along the center of the road. The term non-buried structure is defined and used in the standards. There are design criteria that apply to non-buried structures, down to 4 feet in length, in the same way they apply to bridges. For the definition of a non-buried structure, see page 44 of the 2016 Minimum Design Standards. The definition is similar to the definition of bridge, but there are two important differences about non-buried structures. Their length is defined as 4 feet through 20 feet, and they have no more than 2 feet of fill or pavement material on top. Thus, non-buried structures must meet the minimum clear bridge width which will be discussed later in this video. In the context of the NBCS minimum design standards, non-buried structures can include several types of structures including bridge type structures, culverts, and multiple pipes. This slide shows a non-buried type of structure with two feet or less of fill or pavement on top of the structure. In this video, there are terms used that are specific to the major parts of a bridge type of structure. This slide is referring to a bridge type of structure, as distinguished from the definition of bridge provided in the minimum design standards. The three main portions of a bridge type of structure are The deck is the portion of the bridge that directly carries traffic. The superstructure is the portion of the bridge that supports the deck and connects one substructure element to another. The substructure is the portion of the bridge that supports the superstructure and distributes all bridge loads to below ground bridge footings. Abutments and piers are typical parts of a substructure. There are two criteria associated specifically with bridges and non-buried structures. 
clear bridge width, and structural capacity. Structural capacity also applies to buried culverts. If you find the first standards table, table C on page 55, you will see these two criteria at the bottom of the table, which is on page 56. Most other tables are similar. First, let's focus on clear bridge width and address structural capacity in a few minutes. Clear bridge width is defined on page 46 of the minimum design standards. It is the total width of all lanes and shoulders on the bridge measured between points on the bridge rail, curb, or other vertical elements that project the farthest onto the roadway. New and reconstructed clear bridge width standards are based on the AASHTO Green Book formulas. 3R clear bridge width standards are based on the Transportation Research Board's Special Report 214 formulas. A learning objective throughout these videos is to know and understand all of the notes. This video covers notes 6 and 18 through 22. See pages 47, 53, and 54 of the Minimum Design Standards. If a curb is the vertical element that projects the farthest onto the roadway, is that the point to which the clear bridge width is measured? The answer is yes. Note on page 46 of the standards in the definition of clear bridge width that the word curb is included. The FHWA publication, Mitigation Strategies for Design Exceptions, July 2007, lists curb as a vertical roadside element without regard to height. Some may argue that a so-called brush curb, similar to that shown in this slide, does not count as a vertical roadside element. That is not the Board of Public Roads position. For modern bridges, this will usually not be an issue. Usually, a bridge rail will control the clear bridge width. However, curbs may very well control clear bridge width for 3R work on existing bridges. Staying on the issue of curb as a vertical roadside element, in this slide, the Board of Public Roads is clarifying that a full approach curb section which meets standards, including horizontal clear zone requirements, and is carried across a non-buried structure or a buried culvert, is acceptable. There is no requirement to widen the roadway section at the structure in this case. This slide shows two bridges, both in urban areas. The bridge in the upper photo has bridge rail on both sides. The clearance from the edge of traveled way to the nearest vertical element, the bridge rail, for new and reconstructed work on a curb section is one and a half feet. The bridge in the lower photo has bridge rail on the right and a curbed median on the left. On the right, the appropriate clearance for new and reconstructed work for a curbed section is one and a half feet. This is based on Note 18, Formula E on page 53. On the left median side, it meets standards if, as shown on the previous slide, it has a full approach section which meets standards. On a side note, it is generally accepted that metal guardrail typically attached to a concrete bridge rail and protruding at the ends does not count as a vertical roadside element. The assumption is that it will smash flat in the event of a crash. Structural capacity is the other criterion associated with bridges, non-buried structures, culverts, and other structures. Note 19 on page 54 addresses design structural loading capacity. HL93 and HS15, shown on the slide, are AASHTO standard truck design live loadings. Referring to the third bullet, what is load posting? Posting a load limit is a way of retaining an existing structure in service, possibly without structural modifications, if the anticipated loading needs to be limited, usually as a structure's condition deteriorates over its life. Structures are required to be load posted if the actual load carrying capacity, as determined by a load rating evaluation, is less than Nebraska legal load thresholds. Structures shall be closed if the load carrying capacity as determined by a load rating evaluation is less than three tons. You can think of a load rating as the safe load carrying capacity of a bridge or structure. Note 19 also addresses load posting when 3R or maintenance work is done on a structure. Regarding 3R work, a structure not meeting Nebraska legal load thresholds is required to be load posted unless the National Functional Classification is local and has an ADT under 400 vehicles per day. Under those conditions, the 3R work by itself does not require load posting the structure. 
Maintenance work by itself on a structure does not require load posting the structure. There are three Nebraska legal load thresholds. 25 tons for a Type 3 truck, which is a three-axle truck. 37 tons for a Type 3S2 truck, which is a semi with five axles, commonly known as an 18-wheeler. And 43 tons for a Type 3-3 truck, which is a three-axle truck with a three-axle pup. Bridge engineers consider many different loads or forces when mathematically figuring stresses and deflections or deformations of a structure. The previous slide mentioned three Nebraska legal load thresholds, types 3, 3S2, and 3-3. These thresholds are associated with live load, which is the weight of vehicles on the structure. Dead load is the weight of the structure itself. Other loads and forces considered are wind, temperature, expansion and contraction, settlement, and others. With regard to live load, bridge engineers compute stresses and deflections by modeling hypothetical load configurations. The vehicles shown on the slide are not actual vehicles. They represent overall hypothetical vehicles with certain weight distributions on the axles to be applied to a structure. The larger vehicle shown on the slide is the type 3S2. There are two ways engineers apply the hypothetical vehicles to a structure in order to analyze its stresses and deflections. Truck loading and lane loading. Truck loading applies the load of one vehicle in one lane. It is hypothetically driven along the structure. Truck loading typically determines member sizes for bridges less than 90 feet in length. Lane loading hypothetically puts a platoon of several imaginary trucks on a structure at the same time by applying a uniform load per lineal foot of traffic lane combined with the hypothetical truck loading itself to determine maximum stress in each bridge girder or member. Lane loading is accounted for when analyzing HL93 loads but are not accounted for when analyzing HS loads such as HS15. Lane loading typically determines member sizes for bridges longer than 90 feet. This segment introduces the minimum design standards tables and how they work for structures. See the tables starting on page 55 and ending on page 86. This slide shows two tables from Nebraska's minimum design standards. One table is urban and the other is rural, showing the design criteria associated with bridges. Notice the references to notes and to the formulas A through H that can be found in note 18 on page 53 of the standards. The clear bridge width values are minimums. These minimums must be increased if formulas A through H result in a larger value. The first 12 standards tables starting on page 55 and ending on page 76 have a format similar to that shown in this slide. The first four of these 12 tables cover urban area standards, the next four cover rural area standards, and the last four of the 12 cover scenic recreation standards. The standards tables in subsection 3 apply to county roads and municipal streets that have the following national functional classifications, minor arterial, major collector, minor collector, and local. The other three tables begin on page 79 and end on page 86. When you look at these, you will realize that they are a different format than the preceding 12 tables. There are not as many design criteria and the presence of signage requirements make them very different from the other tables. Low water stream crossings and forwards is the only table that is not a functional classification. However, it needs its own table in order to establish minimum standards requirements. Minimum maintenance and remote residential are two of the optional state functional classifications. If you have a road with either of these classifications, the applicable minimum standards would be either table P or Q, depending on if the road is classified as minimum maintenance or remote residential. On the national system, the same road is likely to have a functional classification of local, but the minimum standards in table J on pages 69 to 70 would not apply to that road. However, for that same road, if the county chooses to meet or exceed the minimum design standards for National Functional Classification Local, Table 3J on pages 69 to 70 
a relaxation of standards request is not required. This does not apply, however, to low water stream crossings or fords. Scenic recreation is the third optional state functional classification, but it has its own four tables on pages 71 through 78, as previously mentioned. With regard to design structural loading capacity, all three tables shown on this slide require HL93 for new and reconstructed bridges, non-buried structures, and culverts. Be aware that there are other requirements in these three tables that this video does not address. Where do the values in the tables come from? For new and reconstructed values, the basis is the Ashto Green Book 11th edition. This applies to clear bridge width and to design structural loading capacity. For 3R values of clear bridge width, the basis is the Transportation Research Board's Special Report 214. For 3R design structural loading capacity, it was a Board of Public Roads decision to select the original design loading as the minimum, and if that is unknown, HS15 becomes the minimum. We have talked about minimum design standards for county roads and municipal streets for the national functional classifications of local, minor collector, major collector, and minor arterial. What if the national functional classification of a county road or municipal street is other principal arterial or greater? Minimum design standards for these roads and bridges and structures through note 4 on page 47 requires the application of state highway standards, which is in section 2 pages 5 through 34. For example, for a reconstructed municipal street with a national functional classification of other principal arterial, table 2L on page 22 is applicable, as well as all other requirements of section 2. Let's look at an example for how to find the table that applies to a project. The example is a bridge replacement on a county road. The first two steps shown are the two things you need to know, functional classification and area standards, in order to find the applicable table. Step three is then finding the correct table. This is an aerial view of the project in Lancaster County, south and west of Denton. This is an actual Lancaster County bridge, but the example and the information are hypothetical. The dimensions are assumed. The bridge condition is assumed to be poor and in need of replacement. The purpose of the project is to address the poor condition of the bridge by replacing it. Step one is to verify the area standards that would apply to the project. The work or project will be built to either rural area standards or urban area standards. Urban area is for populations of 5,000 and greater as approved by local, state, and federal officials. Rural area consists of all areas outside of urban areas. Urban area boundaries are shown on Nebraska DOT maps. If your road is near a city of the first class or near Lincoln or Omaha, find and check the appropriate map on the Nebraska DOT's map library website. This slide shows the Nebraska DOT's map library website. For our example, we are particularly interested in state and national functional classification maps by city. You want to find the map that covers the project area. The project is in Lancaster County, near the city of Lincoln. In this example, you would select the city of Lincoln, which is over 5,000 population and is near the project. What you are trying to determine is if the project is inside or outside the city of Lincoln urban area boundary. This is the selected map, which shows the city of Lincoln's urban area boundary. The bridge is outside of the urban area. Therefore, the project is in a rural area. The road where the project is located will be found on the county map. You need to check notes 2 and 3 on page 47 in order to confirm if rural area standards apply or if urban area standards apply. Note 2 requires rural area design standards to be used for new and reconstructed roads and streets when the anticipated posted speed limit is greater than or equal to 50 miles per hour. The county road is 50 miles per hour in this example. 
Note 3 allows urban area design standards to be used in lieu of rural area design standards in residential and commercial areas lying outside urban area boundaries, where speeds are 45 miles per hour or less. The area in this example appears to be rural in character. In this case, we have confirmed that rural area standards apply to this project. Now that we have determined that rural area standards apply, let's determine the functional classification that applies to the project, both national and state. Note that the state functional classification needs to be checked to verify if one of the optional classifications applies, minimum maintenance, remote residential, or scenic recreation. From the national functional classification map found on the Nebraska DOT's website, South 119th Street is not color-coded. Therefore, the national functional classification for this segment is local. From the state functional classification map found on the NDOT's website, South 119th Street is not color-coded. Therefore, the state functional classification for this segment is local. These maps will indicate if the road is classified as minimum maintenance, remote residential, or scenic recreation. If there is any question or need for help in verifying or establishing functional classification of a public highway, road, or street, contact the Nebraska Department of Transportation as shown on this screen. Maps and reclassification guidance can be found online using the web links shown on this screen. Knowing the area standards that apply, rural, and the functional classification, local, we can now find the standards table that applies to this project. Select table J on pages 69 and 70. The table header indicates that it applies to rural areas and the functional classification of local, both national and state. This slide shows the bottom part of Table J on page 70 of the standards. Knowing the traffic is less than 400 vehicles per day and the scope of work is reconstruction, at this point you can conclude that the clear bridge width minimum is at least 24 feet and the structural capacity must be a minimum of HL93. In the next video, Part 2 of Bridges and Structures, we will check the appropriate clear bridge width formula to see if the minimum is actually greater than 24 feet. Note that there is an error in this particular standards table. For the new and reconstructed ADT group of 400 to 1999, the value for clear bridge width shown in the table is 38 feet. That should be 28 feet. This will need to be corrected in a future rulemaking effort. If you notice any other errors throughout the standards, please contact Liaison Services section now for some quiz questions over part one of bridges and structures when it comes time to answering a review question you have the option of pausing the video before the answer is given is the length of a structure measured perpendicular or parallel to the road the answer is the length of a structure is measured along the center of or parallel to the road not transverse to the road it is a key measurement and important to understand. A bridge, as defined in the minimum design standards, refers to structures A, more than 20 feet long, or B, 20 feet and longer. The answer is A, more than 20 feet. Bridge is defined on page 44 of the minimum design standards, as well as in the Code of Federal Regulations. The length of the opening along the center of the roadway for a bridge is defined as more than 20 feet. The term non-buried structure in the minimum design standards refers to what length of structures? The answer is a non-buried structure refers to a structure from 4 feet in length to 20 feet in length and has 2 feet or less of fill or pavement on top. It can be one of several types bridge, culvert, corrugated metal pipe, multiple pipes. So even if it looks like a bridge type of structure, it is termed a non-buried structure in the minimum design standards because of its length and because it has two feet or less of fill or pavement on top.
Question A. Under certain conditions, a structure can be load posted after 3R work is done on it. True or false? The answer is true. Note 19 allows a structure to be load posted after 3R work is done if the traffic volume is less than 400 vehicles per day and the national functional classification is local. Also, a structure may be load posted after maintenance work. Question B. For 3R work on a structure, when is HS15 loading required? The answer is HS15 loading is required if it was the original design loading of the structure or if the original design loading of the structure is unknown. See note 19. Question 1. What are the two design criteria for structures? The answer is clear bridge width and design structural loading capacity. Question 2. On what sources are the values in the tables for those criteria based? The answer is the ASTO Green Book, 11th edition, and the Transportation Research Board's Special Report 214. Question 3. Is the clear bridge width value a table lookup? The answer is no. A clear bridge width standard value is based on a simple formula, but it cannot be less than the value in the table, with some exceptions allowed for 3R standards. This concludes Part 1 of Nebraska's 2016 Minimum Design Standards for County Roads and Municipal Streets with respect to bridges, non-buried structures, and culverts.